Hey everyone, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study at Dream Center Las Vegas. My name is Pastor Walter. So glad you joined us tonight. Today I want to explore what the Bible says about patience and how it applies to our everyday lives. You know, oftentimes we think of being patient, we think of waiting. And waiting is oftentimes connected to passivity. Or we think of being held up from something we think we should have or be able to obtain right away. So what happens is we become impatient. And impatience is just being human, right? We're all human. We're all becoming patient because we want something right away. But when it's accompanied, accompanied with anger and tolerance, it can become and turn into stepping out of God's will. And we don't want to step out of God's will. We want to be in his will, in his perfect will at all times. You know, there's a biblical definition of the word patience, and it means the power or capacity to endure without complaint, something difficult or disagreeable, forbearance, long suffering. And when I read that, it said the power, capacity to endure without complaint, having a life that you don't, you no longer complain anymore. You're not complaining on, you know, I can't get this right away. I can't have what I want at this time. I need to wait. Imagine going through a drive through man. We all go through drive throughs for fast food. And it's called fast food because we want it fast. And we're waiting in a long line and we become impatient because we want it right away. We become hangry, right? And what happens is we get out of our, our character and anger builds up. And all those things that are not God's will for us and is not even God's spirit right? It's not connected to the fruit of the Spirit. And I read in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. You ready for this? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Yes, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible says it produces these things in our life. When God produces anything in our lives, it's always meant for good. It's not meant to tear us down. It's not meant to make us hold on. Or, or, or man, when is this going to happen? And we start murmuring and complaining. No, it's meant to produce good things in our lives for us to have good things. God wants us to have good things. We are his children. So when, when he produces something, it's going to be good. At, uh, at all costs, it's always going to be good. The Bible says that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So everything that God produces, all the fruit that he produces in your life is for good. Now it also says in Colossians chapter 1 verses 11, it says, We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so that you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy. God's power is for you to have patience. And he wants to give you all of the patience that you need. But we got to agree with what his plans are. We got to agree with all his glorious power because it, it gives us patience. And it, it, it finish off, finishes off that verse says that we will be filled with joy. How do you see a person and they always fill with joy? Why? Because they're patient with God. They're patient with themselves and they're patient with others. And we're going to talk about, talk about that as well. You have to get in line, get in tune to what God wants for you. And sometimes it's going to be, it might take a long time. And some of you have just been waiting for his answer, waiting for God to actually show you the way. And God is teaching us, teaching you to become patient. And that's, I know it's hard as you know, you heard the saying, it's either said, easier said than done. Yes, it is. But with God, it's always easier because he has the right answer for us at all times. God's power is here to develop that fruit in our lives, and we can't do it without him. You can't do it. You can't live this life without God. For those of you still searching for truth, you're searching for answers. It's in Christ Jesus. God has, has the answer, and the power that he wants to give you to follow him is to, to develop you and to grow you and to, to make sure that you are following him because with him, in him, you have everything that you need to live a, God, a, godless, a, godly, um, a godly life. Sorry. Now, I remember uh, just the other day I was waiting on the phone for, uh, you know, I was calling. I forgot who I was calling, but, you know, I had to call some company um, some uh, to pay a bill or something like that. And they said 
the, the, the waiting time would be up to 30 minutes to an hour. And I had 30 minutes to an hour at the time. So I was working on my computer, doing some, some work and I put the phone on speaker and I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. I waited so long that I was able to leave for like 45 minutes and come back. But I knew I had to speak to this particular representative to get answers based on, uh, you know, what I needed at the time. And literally, I felt the voice of God speak to me so clearly and say, you must practice what you preach. So if I'm speaking about being patient, I myself need to practice being patient. That's a fruit of the spirit. So literally, when that thought came to my mind, I feel like the Holy Spirit put that on my mind and put that on my heart. Within seconds, someone answered that phone. I waited for over two and a half hours. Now, that, that doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes, you know, it happens right away, right? Uh, but when God is teaching you something, more times than not, you have to go through it. You have to actually go through that thing that he's showing you and he's teaching you. Why? Because you can become a better person. And there's three different ways I want to talk about to become a better person and how to be patient. Be a people of patience, right? Three ways to become better people of patience. Number one is be patient with others. Allow the grace that was given to you be extended to others who haven't matured to their full potential yet. Think about this, a newborn baby. You will not give a newborn baby a T-bone steak to eat, right? You're giving that baby milk and all the nutrients that he or she needs. So you got to be patient with other people. When other people are, are 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 maybe going through the same season that you're that you've gone through and you went through it and you're coming out as pure gold and you're like, man, I survived this season. If someone else is struggling in, in that season, maybe similar to what you've gone through, it's for you to help them through it. But you have to be patient with other people, just like God is patient with you. You know, sometimes we look at other people and say, man, I'm you know, they're struggling and they're having a hard time, you know, especially with the season that we're in and, you know, dealing with, you know, a pandemic. You say, man, you know, when is this going to be over? And, you know, someone got sick and someone's in a hospital and, you you know, you want to you expect them to get well right away. And, you know, your symptoms wasn't like their symptoms or you just got through it a little bit quicker. But someone else, they might have different symptoms or, you know, different underlying issues that they may go through. But you have to be patient with God and patience with them. And pray for them and, 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 and reach out to those people who, uh, you know, maybe struggling and having a hard time. We have to be patient with others and use that same grace that God has given you. Amen. Uh, number two is be impatient with yourself. You're going to struggle. You're going to fall. You're going you're gonna to want to give up, but you got to be patient with yourself. Okay. Knowing that every time you go through something, it's to build you up. It's to, it's to strengthen you. It's to give you endurance. We just talked about that. Give yourself room to grow. Jesus wants to build you up, not beat you up. I'm going to say that again. Jesus wants to build you up, not to beat you up. And sometimes when we, when we fall and we have a hard time and, you know, things come up in our life and, you know, lives and we, 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 we struggle with, with things and we think like, man, this is it. This is, this is the worst thing that's, that's ever happened to me. And we just want to, you know, wave the white flag. And we think that God is looking down on us, pointing his finger down to us and said, you know, you struggle, you're still struggling with this. You're going through it again. That's not God's plan. That's not God's ways and his purpose for you and I. Jesus never will be, uh, beat you up. He will build you up. He will. Yes, we, we, we get disciplined, but that shows us that God loves us. He disciplines those he loves. He doesn't whoop us and, you know, say, get out of here and, you're, you know, you're out of my kingdom. No, he loves us into his, into his arms. He loves us into his kingdom. So you cannot beat yourself up. So some of you listening to this message uh, today, you're thinking like, man, well, Pastor Walsh, you have no idea. I, you know, I failed so many times. Yes, you have. Get back up, dust yourself off, repent for, uh, uh, from it and try again. Go again. Do it again. God's arms are right there for you. His hand is right there to pick you up every single time. And then number three is being patient with patient. Uh, be patient. I'm sorry. Be patient with God. Okay. Be patient with 
God, he knows what you're going through. He knows what you're doing. He knows where you're at in your life. And if God isn't in a hurry, why are we? Okay. God has so much patience for us. I can be here all day telling you about scriptures about patience. But you got to be patient with God. God knows exactly what he's doing. He, he, you know, this is not new for him. He sees where he sees the end work in your life. He knows your name. He knows how much you've gone through. He knows all the, the barriers that are ahead, uh, ahead of you. He knows the things he brought you from. And if God can see you through this year and, and, and this season, you're going to come out as pure gold. He knows what he's doing in your life. You've got to be patient with God. You say, well, I, no, I, don't, I don't think God sees me. I don't think God knows my situation. Yes, he does. He knows exactly what you're going through. And I pray that this message has blessed you today and you understand that where you're at in your life, but you need more patience. I hope you are strengthened and I pray that God's hand over you, that you will feel God's hand over you and know that God is here for you. He's not against you. I just want to pray for you today and pray that you will have more patience. Okay. That you will have that fruit of the spirit and God will give you all the strength that you need. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are watching today. I thank you, God, that you have given us all that we need to follow you and to know that you're there with us at all times. God, I thank you, Lord. There's times that we become impatient. God, we know, God, that you have given us the strength and the power to endure, to know that you're walking with us hand in hand. And God, that you're going to see us through no matter what we're going through, no matter what season we're in, no matter what this year may bring. Father, I pray you give us patience, God. I pray, God, Lord, for those of us, God, who turned it into anger, who walked away from you and said, Look, you're not there because you didn't meet my need right where I was at. I pray, God, that you would give us hope and a future. And God, I know that, God, you're answering some of those prayers, God, even now. Yes, for those of you who are uh, listening and watching right now and praying with me, God is answering your prayer. I believe that he's hearing you right now and he's going to touch you right where you're at. And you're going to see a victory. You're going to see uh, a, a new sun shine over your life. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Again, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, join in us on social media, on Facebook and YouTube. Listen, church is open. If you want to come and join us, we would love to have you at Dream Center Las Vegas on Sundays at 10 a.m. Bring your friends, bring your family. Yes, we're social distancing, we're wearing masks, all that great stuff. We would love to have you. Again, my name is Pastor Walter. Thank you so much for joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study. God bless you.